Will India show us the moon in a completely new way? In August 2023, the Chandrayaan-3 mission has landed and scientists are expecting completely new findings. What exactly will the rover Pragyan and lander Vikram study on the moon? And why did India land its rovers at the lunar south pole of all places? Join us on this mission and witness a nation conquer the moon. India's success mission lands on the moon. India is the fourth nation to successfully land a probe on the moon. With the Chandrayaan missions, India is making national and international space history. Indians have been outsiders in the space business, but this is about to change. Chandrayaan-1 and 2 were successful missions. The first launch of the Chandrayaan-3 mission was bad luck. The lander and a small rover slammed into the lunar surface and years of work were lost. India did not hesitate, however, and built an almost identical new dual probe and sent it into space from the Satish Dhawan Space Center on July 14, 2023. On August 5th, Chandrayaan-3 ratcheted into lunar orbit. Less than three weeks later, the lander touched down near the lunar south pole at 18.03 Indian local time on August 23rd. This makes India the first nation to position a lunar rover at the strategically important south pole. This probe will provide us with unique impressions of a region that no lander has explored before. Chandrayaan-3 consists of the lander Vikram and the rover Pragyan. India rejoices, Chandrayaan-3 has landed. In India, millions celebrated the success when Vikram landed. This video was captured by Vikram's camera as Pragyan rolls onto the lunar surface. Their descent and the rover's debut were fully automated. Control from Earth is possible, but the delay of the signals is close to three seconds. It takes 1.3 seconds to send a command from Earth to the moon and another 1.3 seconds to receive a response. In an emergency, this may be too long, so the lander and rover have been pre-programmed to perform their landing operation independently with the help of their onboard computers and sensors. Vikram and Pragyan are able to rely on their own artificial intelligence and capabilities at all times during their mission on the moon. The video of the landing is a testament to how well and safely the two lunar probes perform. Other space agencies such as NASA expressed their enthusiasm and congratulated their colleagues from India. Landing probes on the moon is a feat, and India pulled it off with flying colors. In other videos, the Pragyan rover can be seen happily cruising around on the lunar surface. It is controlled by its navigation camera and powered by its power module. Both probes landed near a small crater. Moving at a speed of one centimeter per second, Pragyan will now begin its research work at the moon's south pole. Shortly after the successful landing, the rovers had to be put into a dormant mode in early September 2023. They slumbered for almost two weeks because there was no light at the South Pole during the lunar night. On September 22, 2023, the sun rose again at the South Pole and the two were supposed to begin their work again. But Vikram and Pragyan did not react to the wake-up call at first. There was shock in India and dozens of experts set out to troubleshoot the problem and continue India's big dream of lunar exploration. What has Chandrayaan-3 achieved so far? India conquering space was the dream of one man, Vikram Sarabhai, considered the father of India's space program. The visionary scientist founded the Indian Space Agency in 1969 and was the initiator of major space projects in India throughout his life. Vikram was considered a universal genius in India and a pioneer in fields of nuclear physics, cosmic rays, meteorology, education, industry, and social development. Let's look at another video. These images were taken by the Pragyan rover with its navigation camera. The video shows the Pragyan rover moving on the moon with its six wheels powered by solar energy. The rover is the main instrument of the Chandrayaan-3 mission. It was designed to explore the lunar south pole and perform various experiments and measurements there. Pragyan can move up to 500 meters away from the Vikram lander and communicates with Vikram and the Earth via radio signals. The small rover faces many challenges and is considered a technical masterpiece. A vehicle must cope with low gravity, deep dust, uneven terrain, and extreme temperatures on the moon. Gravity on the moon is only about one-sixth that of Earth. 
This means that the rover weighs much less on the moon than it does on Earth. The vehicle has far less grip and stability and can easily make small jumps. Thanks to a special suspension, it nevertheless remains safely on the ground and comes back up gently after bounces. Pragyan takes small inclines and slopes as well as bumps with ease. With a speed limit of one centimeter per second, the automatic navigation system is able to maintain control at all times and calculates Pragyan's course on all subsurfaces and in all regions of the South Pole. The lunar surface is very rough and rocky with many craters, hills, and valleys. This makes it difficult for the rover to always find a smooth and flat path to move. Pragyan's intelligent navigation system uses sensors, cameras, and algorithms to map the terrain while planning the best route. Even obstacles are easily detected by the small vehicle, and it simply drives around them. The fine and sharp-edged dust particles of the moon were a challenge for the designers. All lunar rovers have to cope with this peculiarity. For one thing, the wheels and navigation must be able to withstand the dust. And for another, the solar cells must be so well-coated that dust does not adhere and result in a layer that blocks sunlight. Pragyan's dust protection system and self-powered brushes, a blower, and even a heater equip the little rover for every conceivable problem. This allows the rover to independently clean all of its instruments of dust buildup, keeping itself in tip-top shape at all times. The temperature differences on the moon are extreme. At night or in the polar night, they can be as low as negative 156 degrees Celsius, and during the day, they rise regionally to as high as plus 121 degrees Celsius. This can cause thermal stress and damage to the rover's instruments. To overcome even this challenge, the rover has a thermal control system that uses insulation, radiators, and heaters to regulate its temperature. At first glance, the rover looks simple. But in fact, this small vehicle is a feat of engineering and the pride of India's space agency. We can look forward to seeing what this brave and curious machine will discover on the moon. Successful Analysis of Lunar Rocks can you imagine that the moon is a treasure trove full of undiscovered riches? China recently proved just that with its Chang'e 5 mission. In a unique move, the rover sent rock samples back to Earth, and what researchers found inside was surprising. In addition to large amounts of water encased in the finest glass beads, an entirely new mineral emerged. One component of this mineral could revolutionize our world and all of space travel. Helium-3 is an isotope that can enable nuclear fusion and provide us with clean electricity. Chandrayaan-3 also has the job of taking rock samples and sending them back to Earth. Here, we see a diagram of the chemical composition of a sample of lunar rock analyzed by the Pragyan rover's laser-induced breakdown spectroscopy, or LIBS, instrument. It shows a bar graph of the elements present in the sample with their relative and percent abundance. LIBS is used to determine the chemical composition of lunar rock samples. To do this, LIBS uses intense laser pulses to heat rock into an extremely hot plasma that emits light. The instrument picks up the light and analyzes its wavelengths to identify elements present in the sample. Among other things, Chandrayaan-3 will determine whether the south polar region differs in rock composition and minerals from other regions on the moon. The composition of the moon's rocks tells scientists much about the moon's origin and evolution. Astrogeologists gain extensive knowledge about precise geological processes and activities from the samples. Surprisingly, the results of this analysis showed that the lunar rocks in the south polar region contain high amounts of sulfur. Sulfur is part of many biological molecules such as amino acids and proteins. In the cosmos, it's considered a biomarker. Although where sulfur occurs, life does not necessarily exist. Sulfur also occurs wherever there is volcanism or magma and lava. It can also be an indicator of meteorite impacts, as some types of meteorites contain sulfur. The presence of sulfur and other elements in lunar rocks in the South Pole region indicate that this region was active and possibly alive with volcanism in the past. These new findings are exciting and fascinating. Chandrayaan-3 may once again completely change our understanding of the moon and its history. 
The findings may also open new possibilities for future exploration and colonization of the Moon. All of the elements available on the Moon have a role to play and are being watched with excitement. Scientists around the world are currently working on systems that will allow lunar colonists to obtain water, oxygen, and fuels even on the Moon. Mapping Lunar Surface Temperature Something that most people completely overlook about the Moon is its extreme climate. The Moon has virtually no protective layer. Sunlight burns on the surface during the day, and at night, the Earth's satellite is bitterly cold. Depending on the region, the temperatures of the lunar surface vary greatly, and it's an exciting thing for researchers to create a map of the Moon that deals only with temperatures and climate zones. Temperature measurements are the business of the Vikram lander. Using its chased instrument, the lander will create a fine temperature profile of the lunar topsoil around the pole over the course of the mission. The long-term instrument will be the first to fully record the thermal behavior of the lunar surface. CHASTE is even capable of creating a thermal map of the lunar subsurface. The results of its first measurement showed that the temperature of the lunar surface and subsurface in the South Pole region varies from negative 156 degrees Celsius at night to plus 121 degrees Celsius during the day. This confirms that the South Pole region is one of the coldest and hottest places on the Moon and that it's a major challenge to the success of the Chandrayaan-3 mission. A day on the Moon lasts 14 Earth days. Thus, Vikram and Pragyan work for 14 days at a time and then they enter a rest mode during the cold 14-day lunar night. The mission has just begun and is expected to provide at least one year of new data from the Moon. If you love amazing videos from space, subscribe to our channel now.